It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rainy Jay's back with the vengeance. Back. All the real Celtics fans in attendance. Ooh. This is the truth like 34. Yeah. This like walking in the garden when you hear the roars. The crowd goes crazy. Most in-depth coverage on the daily. Mainly podcast royalty, the content kings. When you talking about the franchise with 17 rings. Focus like Danny at the deadline. Global with it, got a local feel like the red line, the blue line, the green line. Play it in between time. I'ma throw my C's jersey on in the meantime and press play. When the F's done, I can't wait until the next day. Trying to stay in tune with the C's, that's the best way. Melly. Hey there, John Corrales here from the Locked On Celtics podcast. Thank you for making this show part of your daily routine. Whatever it is that you're doing, wherever you're going right now, I am glad that you have taken the show with you, whether you're listening to the podcast or watching the YouTube video, which I am shooting at the Garden at uh, 1 a.m. So if you can see behind me, I'm going to move out of the way of the video here. You can see that's the ice down there. We've already switched over to the Bruins. Over here at the DD Garden, Celtics will be back here on Friday night to play the San Antonio Spurs. But first, we're talking about the 120-111 win over the Charlotte Hornets. I'm John Corrales. I cover this team for the Boston Sports Journal, and I've written a book called The Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars, which you can get now at uh, The Unlikely Story. Search for it. It's on my pinned tweet, at Reds Army underscore John on Twitter. Uh, I have a book signing coming up Thursday night, tonight. So grab the book, hop on in, hear me talk about the book for a little while, and then you can get a personalized copy. All right, Boston Celtics. Uh, by the way, this show is brought to you by Locker Room. Download the Locker Room app. It's on iOS. There's a beta out there for Android. It basically works like Sports Talk Radio on your phone. You log in. I bring you on. We talk sports for a little bit. Follow me on the app at John Corrales. Okay, Boston Celtics beat this Charlotte Hornets, 120-111. And I'm going to just talk about, first of all, uh, a few of the good things that happened. Aaron Neesmith is going to be a big topic coming up. And later on, I'll talk about why. I'm done talking about how, why wins happen. I'm done with that. We're just going to talk about winning. That's it. But first, let's talk about this game here. The Boston Celtics get 73 combined points from Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. 73, that's a huge, huge number, obviously, especially when they've scored 120. So that's some large percentage that I don't know the math because I didn't do it beforehand, and I'm not going to do it in my head. That's dangerous. Uh, but for Jalen Brown especially, coming out after that loss uh, against OKC, and I, I said it in the last podcast, if you didn't hear it in the last podcast, I was kind of taken aback by... Uh, the the comments where he was like, yeah, we just couldn't find the right energy for whatever reason. And I was like, what do you mean for whatever reason? Well, what's for whatever reason, this is 10 games left, 11 games left at that point, and a huge game that could have helped you in the standings, and you didn't know why you didn't come out like with the energy. So after that, he came out and backed backed himself up and he, which I think he kind of needed to do, really. But 20 points in the first quarter, 8 of 11 shooting. He had it all going. It was a 20-point difference in the first quarter. So all of Jalen's points were the difference in the game. The Celtics were up 20. Now, of course, they gave it back, and but they never gave up the lead, which is an important element to this. Generally, when the Celtics this season have coughed up leads, they have gone all the way and given up that have had to now fight back from deficits. But in this one, they never quite could get, uh, they never quite did give up the lead. Uh, also in the first, early on, Tristan Thompson was huge. He ended up with seven offensive rebounds in this game, 13 rebounds overall, but five of those offensive rebounds came in the first half. He was a beast early. He was getting to the loose balls. He was muscling guys down low. The Charlotte Hornets are not a big team. 
So Tristan Thompson getting those those early offensive rebounds was was really big. Uh, I thought that Tremont Waters started. By the way, oh, let me get this out of the way. Marcus Smart was suspended for this game. He did not play. Kimball Walker didn't play because he has that strained oblique, but he was on the sidelines. He looked fine. Uh, so hopefully that's not like uh, a thing that's going to keep him out for a while. Marcus Smart suspended this this game for threatening language towards an official. I don't know what he said. I don't know what, what happened there. Uh, he was clearly pissed off about what happened at the end of the OKC game, but I didn't realize it had devolved into something that was threatening the uh, official. So uh, we're going to... That that's a one game thing. Move on from that. We get we get this from Marcus Smart every once in a while. He pops off. His emotions get the best of him. Hopefully, this is a, a much shorter version of Marcus Smart's meltdown this year. But that's what happened. That's why Tremont Waters started, and I thought he started out okay. But one of the Tremont Waters trademarks is being loose with the ball. That's one of Brad Stevens' favorite things to say right now. Being loose with the ball and throwing it basically all around the gym. And we saw that late in the fourth quarter where he had a just a simple swing over to Aaron Neesmith on, on his right, and he instead tried to thread a needle into a corner where who knows who he was looking for, and he threw it out of bounds. Brad Stevens was so pissed off that he swung his fist so hard that his mask fell off his face. That's how pissed off uh, Brad Stevens was. Side note, I know a lot of people call for Brad Stevens to get more pissed off about games and stuff. You don't see every element of what he is on the sideline. He was plenty pissed off in this game. You don't see it on camera, and by the time he gets to the huddle, he composes himself, and he's talking normally to his team. But you don't see or hear a lot of the things. He was livid multiple times and live it at the officials multiple times. So uh, Tremont Waters was the cause for one of those times. But early on, he did okay. When he makes simple passes, he'll be okay. Uh, Jason Tatum had 35 points, eight rebounds, eight assists. The passing was was good. This is Tatum. Now, now Tatum did force a couple of shots. He did do the Tatum thing. But... Look, when, when you're scoring 35 points on 52% shooting and four of 10 from three, that's last night when I was talking about, you know, there are exceptions to the hunt great shots. If you're feeling it and you're hitting it, all right, I'll live with it. And Jason Tatum was clearly feeling it in this game. Uh, the other starter, Evan Fournier, was uh, not good. Not good, and what Brad Stevens said after the game, I asked him directly about Evan Fournier, and what he said was he's still foggy from COVID, and that's just something that we're going to have to deal with right now. He's foggy from COVID. It's going to take him a little while to get back into, into what he used to be, but Fournier shot, what, one of seven? Uh, what was he? Four of – no, four four of 12 yesterday. So he's hit five shots since he's come back. He's shooting absolutely terribly. He looks tentative, but he's clearly not himself. So if you're sitting here wondering what's going on with Evan Fournier, that's what's going on with Evan Fournier. Off the bench, Peyton Pritchard was, was pretty good. Another good game for him. Eight points, three rebounds, three assists, but more controlling the game than anything else, especially when Tremont Waters was, was bad late. Tremont was in the game because Pritchard had a bloody nose, and it took them a while to control the bloody nose. I didn't see if he had gotten hit, but when Pritchard came back in, the game started to settle down a little bit. That was that was a big deal. Robert Williams came in and played 17 minutes. Nice contribution. Didn't do uh, much, but he did have a couple of pretty good highlight blocks, some nice dunks, but wasn't his normal self. Again, he missed a bunch of time with the knee. I don't think they're going to rush him back. I think they're really going to try to be careful with him. The key for Robert Williams is making sure that he's healthy and can play 30 minutes when the playoffs come around. And that's coming around in a couple of weeks. So don't be surprised if the Celtics 
don't kind of take it easy with him if they can. Aaron ne uh, Neesmith was the other big contributor, and I'm going to save that conversation for when I come back because he deserves a whole segment onto himself. RockAuto.com is the place you need to go for all of your car parts needs. Is it a simple thing? Is it a complicated thing? When you open up the hood, are you confused or do you know what you're talking about? Doesn't matter with rockauto.com. Go check them out. They've got everything that you need and it's going to save you a ton of money. Don't go to one of those places in the strip mall where they've got like five shelves and whatever's on them is what you're going to get. Don't go to a dealership. Please don't go to a dealership. Don't at all. Go to rockauto.com. They're a family business. They've been serving auto parts customers for 20 years, and they will take care of you. They don't change their prices based on what the market will bear. They don't change their prices for pros or do-it-yourselfers. It's all remarkably low pricing. Their catalog is very easy for you to navigate. So go to rockauto.com and make sure that you write locked on in there. How did you hear about us box? That's the only way they know that you came from us. So when you buy something, and I feel pretty confident that you will, at rockauto.com, write locked on in there. How did you hear about us box to make sure they know we sent you? All right, look at me here. I am in the TD garden doing what I love, sitting here on the steps trying to find the right backdrop. That's my that's my passion here. And you know who else has a passion? Brian at Craft Hot Sauce, the makers of Crack Hot Sauce, C-R-A-I-C. It's an Irish word, uh, and it's a great hot sauce. Look, Brian is, he used to work here in this building. Now, when there are Celtics games, he sits here in this building. He's a local guy. He's a Celtics fan. He works out of Lowell making these craft hot sauces from ingredients that he gets from local farms. So support a Celtics fan, support your local community, support a guy that is here doing what he loves, making these craft hot sauces. I've had these craft hot sauces. They've they've been really good. Like I, I'm a spice guy. I love hot stuff, and so throw them in a burrito. I love Mexican food, obviously. So uh, throw throw them into my eggs in the morning. Throw them on top of a pizza. I don't care. Hot sauce goes well with just about anything. They have a 10% discount for you Celtics fans right now. If you go to Crack Sauce C R A I C CrackSauce.com. You'll get a 10% discount on the Crack Sauce Complete Collection, which is their four main sauces, 40 Shades of Green Chili, Brian Boru's Curry, Mill City Red, and Golden Pumpkin. So it's Crack, C-R-A-I-C, said the Irish way. It means good time in Irish. And you're going to have a good time with these amazing hot sauces made locally with local ingredients. Go to cracksauce.com. Use the code CELTICS for a 10% discount on the Crack Sauce Complete Collection. Aaron Neesmith is getting his own segment on today's podcast because Aaron Neesmith deserves it. That dude puts his body on the line every time he's out there. He hits the floor so much. It's insane. Like He must lead the league in amount of times he's made his home fans gasp with something that he's done and not in a crazy highlight way. The only other guy I can think of is John Morant, who is just constantly, but he does it so differently because Ja is, is flying through the air and you're like, what is he doing way up there? And then he's, he gets hit and he lands awkwardly. That's not the same. Aaron Neesmith just flings himself into scrums it, it's like he's the, the human torpedo or something. He's just throwing himself into plays, constantly hitting the deck. But you know what? That level of effort has paid off. Now, it hasn't always been great for Aaron Neesmith. You can go out there and work your ass off and still not make plays. He's at least making the plays now. And that's the big difference between what he's been doing, and what he started to do recently. Neesmith, we know, is, is a shooter. He's billed himself as an absolute sniper. I thought he was going to come in here and be 
a guy that could stand in the corner, hit two, three threes a game, and you deal with whatever he gave you defensively. It's kind of the opposite. He comes in, plays defense now, and you hope that you can get something out of him offensively. For now, this is how he's making up the difference. And it's taken him a long time to even get to this point. And Brad Stevens mentioned it. Jalen Brown mentioned it. Other guys on the team have alluded to this. When it comes to playing as a rookie this year, when you're Aaron Neesmith, maybe not some of the other rookies. And hey, some of these other rookies have come in and made an immediate impact. Good for them. That's surprising to me. This year's rookies have been uh, put in a bit of an unfair situation. And especially Aaron Neesmith, who left his college season early because of an injury. So he hadn't played basketball since January. It's not like he his season ended in March like Peyton Pritchard's, which is still not great, but he at least got a few extra months of basketball. Aaron Neesmith did not. And then he was rehabbing an injury. So it went a while before he could actually start working out again. And the injury was something that even came up after he was drafted. Like he needed to answer the question that he was still okay and that he didn't need more time to recover from that injury. So it's been a long haul for Aaron Neesmith. Then, because of this crazy season, he gets drafted. Two weeks later, he's in camp. All of a sudden, he's now got a, a Celtics jersey on. And Go ahead. Go out there. Play NBA basketball, buddy. Like No wonder he has had struggles. He hasn't had the time. And as Brad Stevens said, he's really struggled with the speed of the game. Now the game is starting to slow down a little bit. He's starting to recognize things. He had a block on Miles Bridges, which I highlighted. I wrote about him on Boston Sports Journal. If you go read that, you'll see I highlighted it there. He had a great block shot on Miles Bridges, not because he rose up or did anything crazy, but the play that I'm talking about was Terry Rozier runs a pick and roll, Jason Tatum and Tristan Thompson are defending. Aaron Neesmith's guy might have been P.J. Washington. I forget who it was. Is running a clear out cut. Like he's cutting to the corner with the express purpose of getting Neesmith to follow him out so he can clear that right side of the lane. They're setting the pick and roll. Miles Bridges is supposed to attack the basket down the right side. And that cut is supposed to get Aaron Neesmith the hell out of there. So that lane is wide open. Aaron Neesmith sniffs it out. And I'll say maybe the timing wasn't entirely great on Charlotte's part, but Aaron Neesmith sniffs it out, ditches his guy because he sees Bridges coming over and makes the play, gets the stop, gets the block shot, keeps it in play, and runs off with the ball himself. Great recognition that he wasn't getting earlier this year. Great recognition. Coming over, staying vertical. He squared up to Bridges. Bridges is a monster athlete. He squared up to Bridges, and Bridges was off balance. Never let him get back on balance. Was all up in him, but vertical. And when Bridges tried to go up, he blocked the shot and went off with the ball and ended up getting fouled. That's just a beautiful defensive play. Now, he also made other great plays. He made a, a, a couple of plays. One was a block. One was a steal where the guy was trying to get past him. He kind of almost got past him, but he recovered. One time he stole it. One time he blocked it. Uh, blocked it. I think it was Rozier at the end of the game or whoever it was. But he's he's kind of, I don't want to say he baited teams into the Charlotte into making the long pass, but he had a couple of plays at the end where it looked like he wasn't back enough to, to uh, get the guy who was leaking out. Charlotte made the pass, and he got back like Troy Palomalu, recovering real fast, got his hand on the ball, stole it, tipped it back. One was to Jason Tatum. Ball starts going the other way. That's, that's pure hustle and athleticism to go and make that play. Now, <laughs> I said after the game, I asked him directly. I was like, you know, it's almost like you don't care if you get hurt. And he's like, no, I care. I care if I get hurt, but he plays with this abandon that is just 
I don't know, refreshing in a way. Not that I'm saying it's refreshing for a guy to be like, yeah, I don't give a crap if I get hurt, but it's that hustle. It's that desire. He said, if a ball's on the floor, I'm getting it a hundred out of a hundred times. And that's how he plays. He's going to dive. He's going to play hard. And when you combine that hustle with now the added knowledge, now we can start anticipating things. And now we can use that hustle to make actual plays rather than foul out of a game. He did have five fouls in this game, but he stayed in it and he made a couple of big plays down the end. All right, I'm going to come back next and tell you why it's not about style points anymore. Just win, baby. I don't even care anymore how they do it. That's coming up next. Bet Online is your online sportsbook expert. Whatever you want to bet on, baseball, hockey, Bruins, basketball, NBA, sports around the world, MMA, all of that stuff. You could have bet on things like the Oscars, TV shows, reality shows. You can bet on it all at Bet Online. If you go there, you sign up for free, use the promo code locked on, you're going to get a 50% welcome bonus. Whatever you deposit, 100 bucks, you'll get a $50. $50 bonus from bet online 200 it's a 100 dollars bonus you get it 50 percent welcome bonus when you sign up with the promo code locked on signing up is free it's very easy you got odds you got news you got real-time updates it's everything that you need sign up with that promo code locked on you're going to get that 50 percent welcome bonus bet online your online sportsbook experts please gamble responsibly all right i've spent a lot of time this season talking about playing the right way. And Brad Stevens talks about playing the right way. And the Celtics certainly need to play the right way. Okay? Same thing that I've been talking about all along. Move the ball. Move yourself. Set picks. Go back door. Whenever the Celtics make a back door cut, I'm the happiest guy in the world. When they cut, then Jason Tatum hit Jalen Brown with a back door cut uh, in the fourth quarter of this game. I was ecstatic. I was like, oh, my God, they actually saw that. They, they have, hey, they set picks for one another. And I think that might have been more matchup based, not like they're they're exploring the new Jalen sets pick for Jason Tatum play, which I would love for them to do. But regardless, they do actually need to make the right play and play the right way to win games. However, if they don't and they still win, I don't care. It's beyond time. I don't care how they do it. I don't care if they go Harlem Globetrotters on us. I don't care if you start Tremont Waters and Carson Edwards. I don't care if you DNP Jason Tate. I don't care what it is, what it takes. At this point, it's you got to win. The next few games here, you got to win. San Antonio on Friday, you got to win. Break into Greg Popovich's wine cellar. Take his favorite bottle of wine and hold it hostage. I don't care. You got to win. And I'm not going to nitpick over the next week or so if they don't play the exact right way because it's just about getting these W's. Atlanta lost. The Celtics won. Now the Celtics are a game out of fifth. That's huge. New York is going to lose games on this West Coast trip. The Celtics cannot hang their heads or, or care about mistakes. The Celtics can't get caught up in anything besides how the hell do we win this game? If they win ugly, if they turn it over 30 times and win, fine. If they shoot 20% and win, fine. If Jason Tatum isolates the entire fourth quarter and they win, fine. Right now, fine. You know why I'm okay with this? First of all, their margin for error is gone, and you need to win, and it doesn't matter how anymore. So it, it's more about the results at this point. It's been process all the way up until this point, and now you're at a point where it's results. It has to be results. So that's number one why I don't care. Number two, if they get into that four or five seed, or even if they stay in the six seed, but you don't want that because you don't want to face one of the top three teams right away, if you get into four or five, then you get a week to prepare. 
you do not want to get into this play-in game. You do not want to get into a point where you have to play another game, at least one game. And if you fall to the eighth seed two, you cannot have that. For the Celtics to get a full week off, give the guys two days, just two days, get off your feet and do nothing. Then come in and actually practice and work out some of the kinks. That's when we care about playing the right way again. That's when you start going, okay, our first round matchup is, I don't know, Atlanta. Here's every tendency. Here's how we're playing the Atlanta Hawks. You're actually game planning for the other team. And now the Celtics will start playing, we hope, the right way. Because it's one team and they only have to prepare for that one team. But for God's sake, you got to get that week off. You got to get that week to prepare. You got to let the play in tournament happen without you in it. It is so imperative. So I don't give a damn how the Celtics play. I do not give a damn how the Celtics win so long as they win. That's it. That's where they are. I would love nothing more to be able to nitpick right now because that means there would be like tiny little things to nitpick. No, that's done. Right now, it's about winning games. Celtics won this game against Charlotte. It wasn't great. There were some things that happened in there that I was like, eh, doesn't, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Aaron Neesmith went off. Now, hopefully Aaron Neesmith gets more time. But if Aaron, Aaron Neesmith gets a DNP and they win, I don't care. I don't care. It's not about Aaron Neesmith's development right now. Aaron Neesmith will develop at some point here. So it's not about having him, oh, you got to give him those 20 minutes because that's the only way he's going to get better. He'll get 20 minutes somewhere, okay? If, if the matchup dictates that you don't play Aaron Neesmith, then you don't. That's, that's it. If you got to play Grant Williams or Shemi Ojale, and they didn't play in this game, if you got to play them 30 minutes in the next one, then you do it. And if that leads to a win, great. That's where I'm going to leave it because it is 1.30 in the morning almost, and I got to leave this place because I think they might want to kick me out. I think I'm getting eyeballs from around here. But uh, I appreciate you sticking around with me. I'll figure out this lighting thing. Uh, but, hey, if you're on YouTube, look at the banners behind me. That's nice, right? Celtics win, beat the Charlotte Hornets. Up next, San Antonio, Friday. Another big game. Subscribe if you have not subscribed. If this is your first introduction to the Lockdown Celtics podcast, then I hope you liked it. Hope you liked it enough to subscribe. If you're on YouTube and you've been enjoying the YouTubes, really trying to get the YouTube thing off the ground. So I would really love it if you shared the YouTube link. That would be amazing. People are, are, are starting to subscribe and, and people seem to like it. If you've got suggestions, ideas, whatever, send them my way. But I'm going to do more of this on location stuff. And whenever I'm in the garden, I can do this. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. I'm going to keep doing it. Thanks, everybody. This has been the Lockdown Celtics Podcast. We're part of the Lockdown Podcast Network.